Okay, so today guys, one of the things I want to do today is harvest my Chinese artichokes. So, what I'll be doing is digging uh, them up and they're quite uh, invasive, uh, which I learned the hard way when I planted them in my polytunnel and they've spread so it's always good to plant them in containers and yeah they're a nice uh, water chestnut like tuber and they're grown in China and that sort of area Japan Far East and they're related to the uh, mint they're in the mint family so yeah gonna get cracking with that and uh, start digging them up all right so what I'm gonna do is now this bed is quite clay as well. I mean, it's still ground's still pretty hard, but to be honest, at the moment the crop doesn't look too good. <sighs> we'll see what we get. And it's usually best to grow them in soil that's more loamy and fine, so they're easier to clean and stuff. But on this this year I neglected a lot of stuff at the allotment so I'm not too fussed with if I get anything from it I mean it's not looking too too much of a good harvest but I'm gonna abort harvesting the Chinese artichokes on this bed until um, it rains a bit more because the soil is very tough and I do actually have some uh, Chinese artichokes in the polytunnel which I'm gonna now harvest and see if there's any difference there the soil is a little bit better but we'll just um, check it out, see how it goes. All right, let's do it. Now the Chinese artichokes in this polytunnel, I, because they're so invasive, I simply, to protect my banana plant and my cannas from frost, uh, I literally just dumped them on the Chinese artichoke plants. Um, but as you can see, that there died back anyway before I did this. So all of that. And there is an actual Chinese artichoke plant that still hasn't died back. You can see it resembles uh, something from the mint family, uh, although it has no actual mint uh, taste or smell to it whatsoever. So right, let's get cracking on and uh, harvest these Chinese artichokes and hopefully that's something decent to actually show you guys. But, uh, I didn't expect that, something that actually looks like a Chinese artichoke, but you uh, spot which one is the Chinese artichoke, which one is the best. Is he going to focus? Okay. Ugh, one I want, the other I do not want, for sure. <laughs> Look a bit similar, don't they? One is actually a grub, and the other is the thing you eat so don't get it confused guys but yeah and what I think I'll do next time is I'll put them in a big container a nice loose soil and I'll give it a heavy mulch yeah it's not nothing really there I didn't expect much anyway but that's life these things happen. Okay guys, one of the things I want to do today is harvest my yakon. Now, we've had our first frost. As you can see, it's hit it. And I've been growing them in these pots. I have about 19 plants in pots like this. And I originally had about 30 something. And I started off with three plants last year, and through propagating them, I managed to get up to 30 plants and leave quite a lot away to other pot uh, members. So today, we're gonna be harvesting them, and then we're gonna propagate it, and hopefully we get a good crop. First thing I do, harvest this, what I've done is I've mulched with wood chippings around this plant, which is a good way to uh, help reduce water loss. So one of the things I'm going to do is literally just take the mulch off the surface and just use this in the compost. Now this this part of the plot where it is 
see our mulch, these worms, these red wiggler worms, they're the ones that are responsible for breaking down the organic matter and bringing it into the soil. Well, they're not alone doing that, but they are one of many organisms that play that role. They're very gentle around the crown. I want to keep as many shoots as I can, but I bought three of these plants, or not actual plants, the little shoot tips which I'll show you uh, a couple of years back and from those three shoots I managed to get over 30 plants and I gave away uh, quite a few of them, about half of them, and I've got about 19 plants. Right, I'm simply going to just cut off the dead stuff. Top growth, it's all gonna die back. Now, get rid of all this stuff. Now, I was gonna tip out, but this is good soil here, so I wanna keep this. We're just gonna go from the outside. As we can see here, we've got that make out tuber here. We're getting there. It's hard to see the, th the tubers that we eat here. You can see one here. You can see one around here and here. And the other part are interesting to grow more of these uh, plants. And the little knobbly tuber parts here. These are the parts which will sprout the new shoots. So if you see if we get a close up of it. They'll sprout the new shoots here, so they're they're not smooth like the tubers that we eat. They're knobbly. See so these little knobbly parts. This is where the the new growth is going to come. Okay, so this is what we've got. Which, considering the pot size it was grown in, I'm a little bit disappointed. This plant might not have got much water during that time because we had a droughts and stuff. Well, not droughts, but we didn't get much rainfall so you know uh, what I got I'm just happy with at the moment so it's a lesson for next time I'll probably mulch it a bit more so now we know oh, we've got the whole plant out the crown and the tubers are eat harvesting is simply a case of removing the parts we want to eat so these smooth tubers here from the crown of the plant which is going to contain the new shoots now what I do simply is just separate what I want to eat and the whole crown I'll just put in a pot with some compost and leave over the winter and in the spring the new shoots will start to grow and that's when you can separate them so simply a case of just wiggling it really twist it like that there we go one yakko and tuber now in the past or last year sorry I, when I grew these I got some big tubers like this big this long and thick as well quite thick so this year you know I wasn't expecting too much again give it a twist This is what we're going to do for the whole plant. Just twist off these smooth tubers, which are the ones we're going to eat. Again. Now, anything that's like this, that's open, you really want to just wash and eat straight away. With this sort of stuff, you can wash it, peel it, chop it up, eat it. It's good to eat. Good to put in coleslaws and stuff like that, really. Or just, you know, with dips or just on its own. It will discolour. Uh, this stuff, yakom, is full of inulin, which is a sugar the body can't digest. So it's been reputed to be good for diabetics. We've got our crown now of the plant. This is the part we're going to just put into a pot over the winter. Give it a little water. We're going to mulch it. And in spring, we're going to divide up all the new shoots. You can see here, there's quite a few shoots. So we're simply going to get a pot. 
can fill it up with some compost. And then we're just going to leave it over winter. It's a nice sized pot. And from this, you can get, I reckon, probably another, at least another seven, eight plants from this in the spring. So it is worth it. I mean, I bought three of these knobbly pots for £12, which is quite expensive for a plant. But I've now managed to get quite a few more. So it is, it is worth the initial thing. So let's get cracking. Let's get us the compost. And we're simply just going to fill around the plant. In fact, it's going to be easier for me to do this to show the end result. And we're going to just fill soil around the crown. This is from the composter. So it's quite loamy stuff. So what I'll do is I'll simply just pack it loosely around and I'll fill it with a mulch pop it into the greenhouse that's what you do and then in the spring the new shoots will start to emerge and that's when we're going to actually divide this thing so there you go that's how to propagate yakon as you can see here as I said earlier new shoots are emerging already starting to grow on some of my yakon plants even though the top part this growth is dying down.